From the 1st of August, the Bank of England has announced that it will be abandoning its stress test recommendations for approving new mortgages. So today we're going to be exploring what that means for you and how it will affect your mortgage. Hi, welcome back to our channel and podcast. My name is Gemma and here at WIS we talk about all things relating to money, mortgages and positive money mindset. So if that interests you then be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps with our YouTube algorithm and means that you won't miss out on any of our videos. On today's episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages, we have Ifti joining us. And for those of you who don't know Ifti, Ifti is a trained accountant and a mortgage advisor who has been in the industry for over 11 years. He's also one of the founding directors here at WIS. Welcome back, Ifti. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, Gemma? I'm very good, thank you. We've got a bit of exciting news, haven't we, that the uh, Bank of England will be abandoning its stress testing. But today we're going to be just talking about exactly what that means, because I think there's a lot of confusion out there as to what it yeah. actually sort of means. So, yeah, let's get started then. Maybe we should start with... Um, I guess, what is a stress test? Yeah, so stress test could mean anything. It's very common in the bite sector. We see a lot of stress tests, uh, which is sort of available to the public. Right? Mm-hmm. But this is something most people don't see that happens in the background. So when you make a mortgage application, the banks, they evaluate your application. And one of the things they do is they do something called a stress test. This mm-hmm. particular thing that we are talking about is very specific. Currently, what banks do is they have something called a standard variable rate. Mm-hmm. Standard variable rate is the interest at which banks generally lend out, right? This is not a deal rate. This is yeah. the rate that you get when your deal finishes, right? So as it stands, it's around four and a half, five percent depending on the bank. Sometimes a little lesser, sometimes a little bit more as well, right? So generally on average, it's about four and a half to five percent, right? So on top of that, if there is a three percent stress stress, they will add 3% on top. So although you don't see, banks do something called a what-if uh, analysis in the background. So yeah. this what-if analysis will say, let's assume the standard variable is 5%, right? Mm-hmm. So the what-if analysis will see what if the interest rate goes up to 8%, right? Yeah. That is adding 3% on top. Whether that is going to be affordable for you if it's if the interest rate is 8%. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we haven't seen 8% interest rates for a long time. So I think there's been a lot of push from people to get this change, right? And I think this is a response to that, that, uh, you know, these changes are happening. So, mm-hmm. so that's what this stress test is about for this particular scenario. Getting your mortgage online doesn't have to be complicated. At WIS, our website will help guide you through step by step. Our fully qualified advisors can help you get the most suitable mortgage for you. Then you can relax, safe in the knowledge that WIS are working in the background to get your mortgage approved. WIS. Online mortgages made simple. What exactly then is changing uh, with the stress testing for mortgages? Okay, so uh, again, like I said, on top of the standard variable rate, a 3% needs to be added and people are evaluated in this example, say eight at 8%, right? So that is no longer going to be there. So banks can stress test without the 3%. So which means they can stress test at 5%. At the moment, there's only very little information around this area, but this is our understanding at this stage, right? So banks can stress test at 5%. What that actually means for the borrower is there's a potential you can borrow a little extra money, right? Obviously, we all know house prices have gone up quite a lot. The average house price is quite high at the moment. Mm. So, you know, for that person who hasn't had a pay rise in the last two, three years, it's becoming more and more difficult for them to get that mortgage, right? So if there is any help like this, it only makes things easier for them. So when we're talking about how is is it going to help the borrower, really, that's kind of, that's how it's going to help the borrower, isn't it? Yeah, it will. Yeah. yeah, because obviously we all know inflation is pretty high at the moment as well. I mean, we see banks taking inflation into account nowadays as well. And obviously some banks use things like national statistics, right? Where ominous data. So if you are using those details, obviously you see that house household costs spiraling up, right? So mm-hmm. when that sort of happens, they factor inflation as well. That also affects your affordability. You know, I know a very popular bank who's introduced this in a very big way, right? 
So suddenly, you know, we had an application we were going to put for a client. The bank said you can borrow 400,000 or whatever it is. Mm. But next day it was like 50,000 less, right? Because they have factored this inflation thing. Yeah. So with those things not working in your favor, anything like this will, can work in your favor, right? So that's uh, that that will be a welcome change if that's happening. Yeah, yeah that's true, isn't it? Because recently um, lenders changed some of their affordability and, and added yeah. in the, the, the change in the ONS data. So that had a negative impact, but we're hoping then this will have a more positive impact. I think I also read, though, that they are limiting the amount of mortgages that, that lenders can lend on that's over four and a half times your income. So I think that they're still at the beginning, at least, might be not too many changes, but I think they're sort of mm -hmm. going to test it, aren't they, to see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, uh, four and a half times, that's the loan to income ratio. Mm. How many times of income can you borrow sort of question, right? Mm. So that's always been around. I think they're going to continue to do that. There might be some relaxation from some banks, mm -hmm. but from what we understand, again, it's early days because this announcement only was made a few days ago, right? Yeah. Uh, we are yet to see what the banks are going to do, but I think banks might still stick to that maybe four and a half times your income, you know, five times at best sort of things with one or two lenders. I, I know there are one or two lenders who offer a bit, little bit more than that as well. But I think the loan to income ratios might remain fairly static. But we are yet to see that, right? It's very early days because we haven't seen any announcements from the banks, right? So hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, they'll be a little relaxed on that. But from, my, from what I understand from what obviously like you explained, I think they are going to be a little strict on that anyway, right? So that might still restrict some people of to get everything that they want, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of one of those things like watch this space because we're hoping yeah. uh, yes. as we're in the mortgage industry that it might help things, but I guess it, we don't really know yet until more information is released, kind of, I suppose, closer to August, right? Yeah, that's right. I think we'll, we'll see some stuff being announced towards July. The usual banks wait. Uh, almost till the last minute before they can make announcements. So, I mean, we might start seeing one or two making announcements now, but most will announce towards the end, right? So we will see more details, but hopefully we can do another video at that time, right? But Definitely. as it stands, mm -hmm. yeah, as it stands, uh, you know, it looks like there is some kind of good news mm -hmm. and let's hope for, you know, that good news being, you know, very good news for a lot of people, right? So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sifti. Is there anything else you wanted to add to today's video for everybody? I mean, again, uh, don't bank on this announcement and don't wait till August. If you are thinking of buying a house and, you know, you're kind of ready, you might as well still look at it because, like mm -hmm. I said, you know, there are other factors that come into play as well, right? Inflation is quite high. More and more banks are taking that into account, as we explained earlier. So that could impact your borrowing in a negative way anyway, right? So that can have a problem for your uh, the amount you can borrow. And also, in terms of interest rates are going up, as we speak as well yeah. so you know we don't know it'll continue to go up but at the moment it's showing upward trend right mm -hmm. so given all those factors if you are buying a house and you think you can make it you know you might as well start looking at it even now right because we don't know what will change in august but at the same time you know from what we hear mm -hmm. if you are going to be restricted with the four and a half times income and things like that you still can't borrow more, right? So that's not going to help you anyway, right? So if you are interested, please have a chat with someone who knows about the subject uh, and, you know, hopefully they can help you out, right? Yeah, definitely. And there's always those niche lenders, aren't there, Ifti, that have special sort of deals for young professionals that have just been qualified. So if you're like a nurse or a doctor or an accountant, something like that, you might be able to, to borrow a little bit more because the lender sort of sees your potential, your earning potential to grow. So... You know, if you're in that bracket, again, it's good. It's worth speaking to a broker just to see if there's some options there. And then also there are sort of niche lenders who might give you up to five and a half times your income. But again, it's reflected in the rate, isn't it, Ifti? So it's yeah. just worth speaking to someone to see if there's something that could be done. Thanks again, Ifti, for some more great advice. I just wanted to put our regular reminder out there that these points may or may not be applicable to you. So if you're unsure, please do talk to an advisor. And if you don't have an advisor, I will leave our WIS contact details below as we're always more than happy to help. Another reminder that as a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it might be repossessed if you do not keep up with the mortgage repayments. Thank you for joining us again today. We'll be back next week with another episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages. Have a great day, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon.